page four. I go for a fish until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. By my humiliations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my humiliations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my humiliations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sanye Juda Zoge Chonam La Chanju Bando Dane Gapsuch Dage Jin Zoge Bertonam Ge Dola Penge Sanye Juda Zoge Chonam La Chanju Bando Dane Gapsuch Dage Jin Zoge Bertonam Dola Penge Sanye Juda Zoge in dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme Mama, all teachers, the one who taught this peace, which is free of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers, the hearers, the bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas, which through the knowledge of all lead here, seeking pacification and complete peace. Which through the knowledge of paths, causes, or helping Magnus achieve the end of the world, and through the possession of which helps her do as expand a variety of teachings. The one who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings, the teachers who guard and protect her to you are my frustrations. The one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations, and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound. For eternally chance for the forever noble life race to you, the Buddha, I make prostrations. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I gender the matter full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. <coughs> Om Yadarama Heto Prabhavam Hetum Tejam Dathagato Yavatat Tejam Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yeswaha Om Yedarama Heto Prabhavam Hetum Tejam Tejam datha gato yavatat Tejam chayo niroda Evam vati mahashramana yeswaha Om yedarama heto prabhavam Gato Yavatat Tejam Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Nayeswaham All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of causes as well as taught by grace here. Profound, peacefully, elaborate and free, clear light and non-composite such as the Nikola Dharma I have discovered. Finally, no one who can fathom the teachings in silence are return to words. Beyond utterance, thought and expression is professional wisdom, which is unborn, unseas and has the natural space. It's all through the angel self-realized wisdom. To you, the mother of the Buddhas of the three times, are the reasons. All composite things are impermanent. All contaminated things are the initial suffering. All phenomena are the nature of emptiness and selflessness. Transcending soul is peace. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma, likewise the Guru is the Sangha, the Guru is the source of everything wholesome. I go for a fish in the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings of miseries. 
I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expanse of billions of eons. The Buddha does not watch the negativities of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of the suchness that the beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to shine light of Dharma for all the and miseries glow. If attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. <clears throat> okay, what we discussed saying yesterday was the um, independent origination. In other words, waking up from the sleep of ignorance. And the, the most important thing that we need to keep in mind is that what is meant by waking up? In other words, what is the unique thing about the waking up? So what we said is that um, you know, waking up, you come to realize that all the contents of the dream were all coming from your mind. Okay, let me repeat it. When you wake up, the unique thing, uh, the unique thing, or one of the aspects which we need to know pertaining to understanding emptiness is that um, when you wake up, you come to realize that everything that happened in the dream was all just a projection of your own mind, all coming from your mind. Okay, this is very important. And, um, and now technically, is that everything is imputed by my mind. This is the technical word that we been learned. Impu every, everything is imputed by my mind, everything is designated by my mind, so these are ten. So in loose sense we say everything is coming from a mind. But in technically, everything is the uh, the designation of one's mind, everything is the imputation of one's mind. So these ten words that we need to learn. Okay. Um, so what we said was that the um, the Buddha having a the after attaining Buddhahood, remain, attain Buddhahood remain silent for 49 days. And um, then at the request of Indra and Brahma, the Buddha had it was Sarnath. So from there, what is known as the three turnings of the will of Dharma happened. Three turnings of the will of Dharma. So we need to know these things. Three turnings of the will of Dharma. In Tibetan, Chukur, Chukur, Chukur Rinpasum. Chukur Rinpasum. Three turns will dharma happened, and the first turning, uh, the to know each of these three turns will dharma, we need to know three things for each, three things. One is the place where the teaching was given. Number two, was the who is the target audience, who is the target audience, target audience. Then number three, was the subject matter of the, the teaching. Three things to remember. The place where the teaching was given, the target audience, and then the subject matter, the content matter of the of the teachings. Okay, these are three things that we need to know, but they to know the three turnings of the will of Dharma, each one of them. And in terms of the place, the first turning, the um, the first turn of the will of Dharma was in Sarnat or Varanasi. Okay, what's the difference between Sarna and Varanasi? Anyone? What what's the difference between Sarna and Varanasi? The same or different? Huh? Different. Okay, Navia. Say it again. Oh, so you are saying that these are different places? Okay, Sarna is not in Varanasi. So the. Okay, so the. Uh, let's say that. A Road Institute is different from India? No. No? It's in India. So Sarna is in Varanasi. Varanasi doesn't mean only the Varanasi, the small city. The whole space is known as Varanasi. Within this. Uh, sarna is part of it. You are getting it? So, to be more precise, it is Sarna, otherwise, in loose sense, Varanasi. 
Okay. Um, then uh, what is number number one is what the, the place the place says Sarnath or Varanasi. What is number two? The target audience. Okay. To know the target audience, you remember last time we we uh, we learned about the the four Buddhist uh, schools of thought. Okay. What are they? I hope all of you have these four on the fingertips. What are they? Vaibhashika, Sautrantika, Chitamatra, and Matyamika. Okay, these four. First turning word of Dharma. The target audience is the Vaibhashika and Sautrantika, the first two schools. The, the target audience of the first turning word of Dharma is Vaibhashika and Sautrantika schools. So this will give us a very broad picture of Buddhism. Then you can go into deeper. First example of Dharma, that's the Thakur Devadin says by Bhashika and Sautrantika. And what next? Contents. Contents or the subject matter of the teaching. Subject matter of the teaching is the Four Noble Truths. Four Noble Truths. And more precisely, the Four Noble Truths to be existent truly. Four Noble Truths to be existing truly. Or truly existent Four Noble Truths. In a loose sense, Four Noble Truths. Four Noble Truths, and more precisely, Four Noble Truths to be existing truly. This is the subject matter of the first turning of Dharma, that Four Noble Truths exist truly. Okay. Then the second turning of Dharma, the place is Rajgir, or Vulture's Peak, Rajgir. Rajgir, this is more the, the comprehensive. Rajgir, second turning of Dharma. And the third audience says, Okay, so the, um, you think that it's going to be sequentially? It's not sequential. Um, the, so those who said Chitamatra means it's sequential. It must be next to Chitamatra. No, it is opposite, the Madhimika. Second turn of the Dhamma is the place is Rajkir and the target audience is the highest uh, the, the, the philosophy of Buddhism, Madhimika, Madhimaka. And uh, then what next? Subject matter. Subject matter of the teaching is that nothing exists intrinsically. Nothing exists intrinsically. Emptiness of intrinsic existence and intrinsic slash inherent slash objective. Okay, nothing exists intrinsically or nothing exists truly, let's say. Nothing exists truly to, uh, to incorporate both the Madhya makers that nothing exists truly. In other words, the, the perfection of Wisdom Sutra. Second turn of Dhamma, the subject matter is the perfection of wisdom. The professional wisdom. Perfection of wisdom. What is the perfection of wisdom? The wisdom to know things as empty of true existence. Professional wisdom. Shervuge Parudu Shimpa. In Tibetan, Shervuge Parudu Shimpa. Okay. Then number three, what is number three? Second, a third turn of Dharma. Third turn of Dharma, and this is interesting. The place is Vaishali. Place is Vaishali. Vaishali. And what happened was that in Vaishali, there was a huge group of the audience. They, and the Buddha presided over the, the congregation. And then, particularly, there are so many Bodhisattvas there. But more precisely, 10 very high level bodhisattvas, the ten Bhumi bodhisattvas. Ten Bhumi bodhisattvas. And ten Bhumi, uh, the, these ten bodhisattvas on the ten Bhumi, on the, ten, on the ten level, they are, each of them asks a question to the Buddha, which means ten questions. And the Buddha responded to all these questions. And particularly, and there was one bodhisattva, by the name Bodhisattva Pramad Samudgada. Bodhisattva Pramad Samudgada. In Tibetan, Tundam Yandapak. Tundam Yandapak. Bodhisattva Pramad Samudgada. He stood up and asked the Mintrasvishnu Buddha and asked the Buddha the question that the, um, that the, the Buddha 
in the first ten noble of Dharma taught that four noble truths exist. Okay, let's not forget these the, the points. In the first ten noble of Dharma, the Buddha taught that uh, the four noble truths exist truly. In the second ten noble of Dharma, the Buddha taught nothing exists truly. So, on the given that the Buddha is the omniscient one, there should be no confusion. There must be a reason why the Buddha taught these two superficially contradictory teachings. On the one hand, the first turning, the Buddha taught four noble truths exist truly. Second turning, what the Buddha Dharma, the Buddha taught nothing exists truly. So the um, the how do we understand it? Which is the how, what should we accept? Should we accept that things exist truly or things don't exist truly? So. Um, this, uh, please uh, be clarified. So, Pro Bodhisattva Pramat Samudgara, he, really, he did not really need the clarification of himself. He knows everything. The only thing was that, the, during the first time of Dharma, the first two uh, the philosophical schools, or the practitioners, or the philosophers of the first two schools, when they learned that the, the Four Noble Truths exist truly, which the Buddha taught, they were happy, they left. They were happy. Second Terrible of Dharma, when the Buddha taught nothing exists truly, uh, the Madhyamika philosophers, they were so happy, they left. Then the average, the intelligent and uh, the philosophers, Chittamatra, they were confused. So first time Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths to exist truly. Second time the Buddha taught nothing exists truly. So what should we accept? Right? So they were confused. Chittamatra, they were confused. And Bodhisattva Pramat Samadgada, on behalf of Chidamatra, he asked this question to the Buddha. Then the Buddha made a clarification. The Buddha interpreted his own teachings, the first two teachings, and that came that interpretation came to be known as the third turn of the will of Dharma. So meanwhile, let us not forget that a third will, a third turn of Dharma on that same place, Vaishali, the Buddha responded to 10 different questions by 10 different bodhisattvas. So all these 10 uh, fall under the category of the third turn of Dharma, but the third turning in the context of the first and the third, second turning, you're getting it? So we need to make a distinction between, say, the uh, first, the, the third turn of Dharma in general and the third turning in the context or in the context of relationship with the first turning and the second turning. So there, and the only section or section of the response the Buddha gave to the question asked by Bodhisattva Pramat Samudgata. That becomes the third turn of Dharma in the context of the first turning and the second turn of Dharma. You're getting it? Because uh, that one, the response the Buddha gave the, as a clarification, to the question asked by, uh, to the question asked by, Bodhisattva Pramat Samudgata, um, the that becomes relevant related to the first and second turn of the Dharma. So that is precisely the third turning that we are talking about. Otherwise, third turning is not only third turn of the Dharma is not only confined to that part. It is constituted of the, all the ten responses the Buddha gave to the ten different questions asked by the ten Bodhisattvas. Okay, so are you interested? How did the Buddha clarify? How did the Buddha clarify and the clarify in response to the question asked by Bodhisattva Pramat Samadgada? How many are you interested to in know this? Okay, so the, um, this could be a little lengthy, but it's, in a way it's good. Okay, so for this what we need to know is that this will take us to the Chitta Matra philosophy. This takes us to understand the Chitta Matra philosophy. So the basic principle of Chitta Matra philosophy, to know that, we need to know what is known as the three natures. The three natures. Three natures. Okay. One, imputed nature. Number two, other powered nature. Number three, thoroughly established nature. We need to know the three natures. Imputed nature, other powered nature, thoroughly established nature, the three natures. 
Then the, to know what these three natures are, we need to know uh, the classification of everything that comes to our mind. Anything that comes to our mind uh, can be classified into, uh, so see, let us see the, how they're classified. That whatever comes to your mind, feel free to think of anything, existent, non-existent, whatever. Um, the, okay, so what I do is that I will try to classify these things and then you, your job is, so when I say that, okay, say what comes to your mind, some people, maybe, you know, I don't know whether here, here people are not really interested in, in those things, but many people, they wish that they are this second, because what is his name, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, huh? Elon, Elon Musk. Some people they may dream that I'm the second Elon Musk, right? That I'm the richest person in the world. I don't know whether he's the richest, but some people they dream like this. I'm the Elon Musk, right? Okay. Some people they said yes, I realize emptiness, emptiness, blue in color. You know? Yeah. Some people they discuss that. Like this. They say that it's very interesting. Emptiness dependent on origination. In fact. A dependent origin, overall speaking, dependent origination, given that it has three levels of understanding, and the, um, so we can understand dependent origination, the grosser ones, easily. And there were, I met one young gentleman, and he did not really go through all the system studies. He is totally out of the system studies, not at all doing any system studies in Buddhist philosophy. He was just hearing, you know. He saw the teachings here and there, but no interest. And then he, he, one time he was telling me that emptiness is easy. Emptiness is easy. Dependent origin is more difficult. Right? Actually, dependent origin, even the low schools, they understand dependent origination. But emptiness is far away from the understanding. So he just said the opposite. Emptiness is easy. Dependent origin is more difficult. This is a clear indication that the person is very naive. You're getting it? So, the, uh, so this is like, I say, non-existent. So we have uh, the things can come to your mind, non-existent, existent, good, bad, subtle, gross, academic, mundane, or spiritual mundane, anything come to your mind. Okay, so do you agree with me that anything that comes to your mind, to, to anybody's mind, can be classified into two? Existence and non-existence. Do you agree or not agree? Yes. If you agree, be louder. Yes. Good. So existence and non-existence. So as I do the classification, as I make the classifications, um, your job is to keep note of those things which I don't classify any further. You're getting it? For example, like existence and non-existence, I'm not going to classify non-existent, right? Those things which I don't classify any further, remember them. Okay, then at the end, I will ask the question, what are those things which are not classified any further? Okay, so that anything that comes to your mind is classified into existence and non-existence. Now, existent, I further classified this into two, permanent and impermanent. Permanent, again I classify them into two. Ultimate reality and permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. Okay, that's it. How many things are there which I do not classify any further? How many things are there? Huh? Okay, two? Four? Now if somebody says three, then we have almost all. Okay, two? How many of you said two? Raise hands. One, two, three, four. Okay, how many said four? Raise hands. Four. Okay, how many of you say three? Raise hands. And how many say only one? Okay. It uh, seems like the one who said four is more. So what are the four? Tell me. And those who said two, listen. What are the four? Yeah, doing la. Number one, non-existent. It's uh, number two. What? Impermanent phenomena. Number two. 
ultimate reality number three. Permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. Four. Okay, those who said two, do you, uh, do you still st stick to that or you change your mind? Change your mind. Okay, now how many you will say four? Raise hands. How many say two? Raise hands. Okay, so what are they? What are the four? T say it again. Non existent. Then impermanent phenomena. Then ultimate reality then permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality so let's see that on my right hand we have the set of three that is the three natures on my left hand we have the set of four set of four which we just classified right now non-existence impermanent phenomena ultimate reality Permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. Four. You're getting it? So now we do what we do is that all these four should go into these all all these all these in the set of four should go in this set of three. You're getting it? So how do they go? So for example, let's say that okay, on the one hand we have people who here, the people who are boys and the non-boys. Do you agree with me or not? Anybody anyone who's here should be either boy or non-boy. Yes, no. Yes. yes. And anybody here should be either below 20 or below 30 or plus 30. Yes? yes. Right? So they, they're set of three and set of two. On the one hand, I said that everyone should be either boy or non boy. And on the other hand, I said that everybody should be either below 20 or below 30 or plus 30. 30 plus. You agree? Okay, so we have to see how these other people, if these two are just same, a different way of classification, then we do know how the set of the four, set of four go, go into the, as the, it goes into the set of three. So let's see, let's work on one by one. This is very important. Okay, from the set of four, what is the first one? Non existent. Non what is the second one? Impermanent phenomena. Okay, so uh, while I pick up things, while I do not pick up things, keep them there in the set. You're getting it? I just, the first I pick up the impermanent phenomena. Impermanent phenomena will go into the, I'll say the uh, other power of nature in the set of three. Impermanent phenomena from the set of four will go into the other power of nature in the set of three. Because impermanent phenomena and other power of phenomena, these two are synonymous. Impermanent phenomena, other power phenomena, this was synonymous. What do you mean by other power nature? Other power nature. Other power nature in Tibetan it is Shen Wang. Shen Wang. Okay. What is other power nature? Other power nature means a phenomena which comes into existence by the power of other causes. They may repeat it. Other power of nature meaning a phenomena which comes into existence by the power of other causes. So anything which is anything which comes into existence by the power of other causes is impermanent phenomena. Impermanent phenomena and what depends on other causes, these two are synonymous. You're getting it? So out of the set of four, impermanent phenomena is gone. Okay, now what is left? Non existence is left. Ultimate reality is left. Permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality is left. Okay, from the remaining four, no, remaining what? From the remaining three, let us pick up the ultimate reality. We have the ultimate reality. So this ultimate reality will go in the, uh, the word, the, the thoroughly established nature in the set of three. Ultimate reality, thoroughly established nature in uh, Tibetan is Yongduk. Thor thoroughly established nature in Tibetan is Yongduk. Okay. So the other part of the word, ultimate reality goes into the thoroughly established nature. These two are synonymous. Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate and thorough. Are these two, there, is there some similarity there? Right? It is the, the, the thorough knowledge or say the ultimate thorough. They are similar. So ultimate reality falls under the category of the thoroughly established nature.
Okay, done. Now, from the set of four, how many are left? Two. Two. What are they? Non-existence non and? Non permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. So these two, there is no choice. Now, from the set of three, two are gone. What are they? Other power of nature gone. Thoroughly established nature gone. What is left? Imputed nature is left. So these two things from the set of four, non-existence and permanent phenomena other than the ultimate reality, these two will go into the imputed nature in the set of three. Go into, okay. So what is meant by imputed nature? So you already understood what is other power of nature. You already understood what is meant by thoroughly established nature. Now you want to know what is meant by imputed nature, right? Okay. Uh, let's say that, um, okay, what is the difference between this, okay, what is this, whose chocolate is this, it's my chocolate, right, you want to have a chocolate, I'll give you a chocolate, right, this is what, munch, right, okay, so I'll give you a chocolate, Okay, what is in my right hand? Nothing. Nothing. Just imagine chocolate. So this is yours. <laughs> right? What is the difference between these two chocolates? So one in my left hand and the one that I'm going to give you. What's the difference between the two? There are so many differences. Just speak your mind. Anyone? Huh? Okay, raise hands. Here. Okay, so this has a, the, this chocolate in my left hand has a substance, and in my right hand, there's no substance. If there's no substance, then the, uh, what is meant by this chocolate? What is this? You can't enjoy it. You cannot enjoy it. What else? Nicola? The one in the right hand doesn't exist. Oh, imaginary chocolate. Imaginary chocolate. Let's say this is not. Imaginary chocolate is not a chocolate, but it's an imaginary chocolate. It exists as an imaginary chocolate. What's the difference between the two? Anyone? Yes? Ah, the imaginary chocolate is not really from the object. It's just mental, you mentally imputed. You're getting it? So there comes imputation, imputed nature. You're getting it? What does not have a substance there? If some, it just comes into being simply by your mental imputation. You're getting it? This is the meaning of imputed nature. So, impermanent phenomena, they are not imputed nature because they have a substance there. You don't need to impute, there's a substance there. And then the thoroughly established nature is also not imputed because it's so ultimate there. It's ultimate, ultimate means that your mind cannot really the what or the, what's the word? Modify. Your mind cannot modify this. It's the thoroughly, it's the ultimate. You cannot, the, the other things cannot really modify this. So your mind cannot impute this. So what is imputed is the non-existent things. Right, for example, say, okay, some people, they, they okay, let's, if I say that, oh, I'm the president of America, this is just purely imputed. Right? Non-existent. is non-existent. And then they say the permanent phenomena are then okay. The, what are other things under this category? Imputed nature. Hey, are imputed nature? Permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. Can you give me some examples? Raise your hands. Can you give me some examples? Permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. Raise hands. Raise hands. Okay. Remember, uh, Sirla. Uh, horn of a rabbit. Rabbit's horn or horn of a rabbit. Horn of a rabbit is non existent. So, permanent means it should be existent, right? Permanent, impermanent, these are the classifications of exist, existent. What exists can be either permanent or impermanent. If it's non existent, it doesn't, it doesn't fall under this category. Okay, uh, I was going to say uh, the, um, the absence of the chocolate. Absence of the chocolate in my hand. 
absence of chandra is permanent impermanent it's a composite or non-composite? Non it's non-composite. It does not have a substance there. It's a non-composite. It's as permanent or impermanent. Non-composite and permanent is are synonymous. Composite and impermanent is are synonymous. You're getting it? So because that absence of chocolate is a non-composite, non therefore it is a permanent phenomenon. And is it ultimate reality? It is not ultimate reality. It's very simple. It's easy to know. Ultimate reality is very difficult to know. So therefore, absence of chocolate, non-composite space, these are all, these all fall in the category of imputed phenomena. Very good. Okay, now, so why are we going through this? Why do we go through all these complications? Third turn of Buddha Dharma, then what? In what way is Ten questions then? Do you know Jaila Bodhisattva Pramath Samudgada. Yes. So in the first turning Buddha of Dharma, the Buddha taught the four noble truths exist truly. Second turning Buddha of Dharma, Buddha taught nothing exists truly. So the Bodhisattva Pramath Samudgada, on behalf of Chetamatra, asked the Buddha. What is your intention in teaching these these two otherwise superficially contradictory teachings? They, what, what is the reason? What is the reason? And then the Buddha made the explanation. So what is that explanation? What is that interpretation? So this is what we are trying to explain. And then uh, from this came the Chitamata philosophy. To know the Chitamata philosophy, philosophy, the ground is to know the three natures. What are the three natures? Impure nature, other power nature, thoroughly established nature. Very good. Three natures. Now you know what the three natures are. The, the impure nature. What falls under this category? Impure nature. Non existence. And permanent phenomena other than ultimate reality. If possible, during group discussions, and you, when you're by yourself, during the, the what? the lunch break no after the the lunch you try to revise these just see if you can remember these without having to look at the book keep the book next to you and then just try to you know remember these map these well without having to look at the book and if you miss something go back to the book and again do it without looking at the book this is how we exercise this is extremely good to make your brain very active so that when you grow older you will not have to go through dementia. dementia. Right, these are very good exercises. Okay, just mentally doing all this, mapping all these things. Okay, so what is that interpretation? Now that's the, the main thing, right? Thus far we have just gone into laying the ground. Now what is interpretation? So the Buddha interpreted um, the, by teaching that, yes, you are right. In the first turn of Dharma, I taught that the Four Noble Truths exist truly. I taught that things exist truly. When I said things exist truly or the Four Noble Truths ex exist truly, I meant, I meant, and the, of the three natures, I meant the other power of nature and thoroughly established nature, these two to be truly existent. You getting it? When I said, in the, second in the first turning of Dharma, when I said, the Four Noble Truths exist truly, or things exist truly, I meant, I meant, from the three natures, I meant the other power of nature and thoroughly established nature as truly existent. In the second turn of Buddha of Dharma, when I taught that nothing exists truly, I meant the imputed nature. You are getting it? Imputed nature. Okay, if I were to ask you this question, do you agree with me or not? If I, was, if I were to ask you this question, say, the chocolate in my right hand, my left hand, and the chocolate in my right hand, uh, or the imaginary chocolate in my right hand, and the real chocolate in my left hand, of the two, which is more true? Hey, you tell me. Chocolate in my left hand is truly real. 
and the, the right hand is not truly real. What is imputed is not true. What is substance and what is thoroughly established, they are true. You're getting it? Does it make sense? Good. So the Buddha said, that in the first term of Dharma, when I said the Four Noble Truths exist truly, I meant, I meant the, the other part of nature and thoroughly established nature, these two to be truly existent. In the second turn of Dharma, when I said nothing exists truly, I meant the impure nature to be, uh, to be uh, not existing truly. You're getting it? This is how the Buddha interpreted This came, then this evolved as Chetamatra's philosophy. You're getting it? Chetamatra's philosophy. Okay. For Chetamatra, other part of nature and thoroughly established nature, these two are truly existent. Whereas, um, the impure nature doesn't exist truly as truly existent. This is what we need to keep in mind. Okay. So with this, we, we are done with the, the three turnings of the Dharma in a very generic form. Now, now what? Now, we have to jump into the, the pool. The pool of ultimate reality to wake up. How to wake up, right? Okay. So for this, um, the um, okay. So let me give you some examples, and then we will jump into the pool, right? Ready? Okay. Let's say that. Oh, by the way, to know emptiness, what should we be learning? Actually, tell me. Speak your mind. Don't speak your philosophy. When you say, okay, now we're going to jump to the pool to learn about emptiness. So broadly speaking, what kind of idea do you get when you speak about emptiness? What should you be knowing? What should you be learning? Chanjibla? Emptiness of. What is emptiness of? Okay, when somebody is speaking, don't, you don't have to think that, okay, my thing is wrong. What he said is very sophisticated, right? You're getting it? Whatever, okay, give a thought. I give you 10 seconds. Say, in your mind, what comes to mind? When I say, okay, we are, we, are, we are going to jump into the pool of emptiness, which means we're going to learn about emptiness. So what do you expect to learn from this? Give a, uh, take your a, take a time, ten, 10 seconds. Okay, so when somebody else gives the answer, don't change your mind. In fact, I may prefer your answer better than others. Some people may give exotic answers and you may feel that, oh, my answer is so coarse, very crude. Perhaps I may like your answer better than others. You again, don't change your mind. Just share with us. Okay, Chanjula. Okay, emptiness of what? Emptiness of what? Okay, should we go A, B, C, D one by one or huh? one by one? Right? Gabor, you like to share? Okay, now this way or this way? It's like I repeat the question, please. Huh? Okay. We young gala. What's the question? Huh? Yangala? What's the question that I asked? You remember? Because Yangala said that it's from this side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The question is that for us to learn about emptiness, right, what do you expect? Okay, I need to know this part. I need to know this thing to know emptiness, you know? What is that thing that you that you think we expect you to know, we expect you to learn. So Chanjula said, with emptiness, we need to know the, the, when you say emptiness, emptiness of what? Object that is negated, negated, negate means empty of, to know the empty, what is, what, uh, the, the, what are you talking about? What is that object that you're talking about, which you are going to negate, to know the empty of? So what is the object? This is what Chanjula is saying. Reasons. Number two. 
presence yes uh, two parts one object and what is it composed of okay say so what is the object that is negated yes. and what is it com composed of meaning what is it made up of okay what, what is, is it that? okay and uh, how the subject is perceiving okay how the subject perceives it okay good anyone else presence yes how everything is projected by your own mind? How everything comes from your mind? Or how everything is projected by your mind? Yes, to this Allah. Yeah, so, how, say, the application of this, how understanding emptiness will help us to tackle your emotions like anger, doubt, and so forth, how these negative emotions will be, uh, say, the what they tone down or medicate it. Anyone else? Yes. How to be more precise with the object of negation? Okay. How to get the object negation negation very precise. You negate it and then you get the emptiness very precisely. Gabor? Uh, for me what comes to my mind is why is it like that? Why is it like that meaning? What is it? Why, why Okay, so the uh, the emptiness of objective existence, why this is known as emptiness, why this is known as ultimate reality? Why is this ultimate reality? Or why is it like this? Why, why the reality is like this, empty of objective existence? Okay, to see? Okay, so what's the opposite? Okay, uh, which means object negation. Yeah. Okay, so the three people are more same. To know emptiness, you have to know what you are negating. Opposite emptiness. You, what are you negating? Object negation. Good. Anyone else? Okay, Rajni. Say the, let's say the flower, flowers projected by mind. Then, from your mind, the mind projects. The movie is projected by the movie projector. Likewise, the your mind is the projector, which projected, which projects the flower and other things. Yes, say flower and your mind. These two are separated by distance. So with respect to the flower, your mind is away from the flower. So the mind projects the flower. Okay, Chelsea? By the way, Chelsea asked me a very interesting question. You remember the question? You forgot the question? What's that? The question was, with everything that we're learning, hmm. Okay, this is a very interesting question, right? We learn about renunciation, we learn about bodhicitta, emptiness and so forth. How long will it take to get there? How long did we, will, it, will it take us to understand emptiness? How long will it take us to understand or understand, realize emptiness, realize bodhicitta, right? Anybody who has answered? So Anushri is saying that it depends on the individual. Is this your answer? So how much you spend time? Okay, in fact, this reminds me of a very interesting anecdote. I don't know if they, the Tibetans, they, most of the Tibetans, I'm sure they know this, but if you don't know, let me know. Um, there's, a Tibetan, there's an anecdote, a story. From a very remote a place, border of Tibet, to the central Tibet, uh, the capital city of Tibet, Lhasa. 
in those days either you walk or you ride a horse and the uh, there was a person who was going from the remote a uh, remote village to the towards the Lhasa capital city of Tibet then they uh, the he met he met a frequent traveler from the body language you could see that he he's a frequent tra traveler so he met that and then he asked hey gentlemen sir please tell me how long will it take to Lhasa right so this is what you want to know how long will it take to understand emptiness? Right? Okay, please hold the, so the story flows. Yeah. <laughs> then then the right? Then the this frequent traveller, he didn't give the answer. And the uh, again the person asks, Hey sir, please tell me, how long will it take to get to Lhasa? He give he didn't give the answer. Third time he asked, didn't give the answer. Then he said, okay, I don't, it's fine, I don't need your answer. So he started walking. <laughs> and then the frequent traveler said, hey, 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 gentlemen, come, come, stop, stop, stop. It'll take you three days. Right? It'll take you three days. Then he said, why did you not give the answer right, right away? You know, why, why you make me walk all the way? Why you make me angry? And he said, no, how can I know how long it will take till I know how, what pace you run? <laughs> right? so now, I, then, now I see the pace at which you run. I can see from this you will take three days. <laughs> this is exactly what Anushri is saying. Right? Is this the thing? Okay. So let, let's forget it. Let's not forget it. Right? Okay. Then the another, so the, I also shared with you this thing that the um, some people will say that oh the Buddhahood right Buddhahood I'll do for I'll sit for three 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 years retreat three years three months three days retreat and then I become Buddha and some people say that and then coming to the Buddhist retreat some people say three e three countless eons to become Buddha and then they look they're talking about three years three months three days but here in the Bodhisattva retreat, it's like six months. Because I can from what he said is that there are four main things. Renunciation, Bodhisattva, Wisdom Emptiness, and Single Point Meditation. Single Point Meditation, it may take me like two months, three months. And the Bodhisattva, oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm a little compassionate. If I practice it, one month. <laughs> then the Wisdom of Emptiness, he says, but to study more. But how, how he explains it, right? Six points to imagine emptiness. Um, okay, so the one one month, but let me say two months. Okay. And the word? A renunciation. A renunciation, you know, look at the Ukraine war, all these things. Easy, right? Renun renunciation is easy. I'll not come to samsara again. You, you, what Putin is doing, check. So renunciation is like 15 days. So total, in six months, already gade, 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 para, gade, para, samgade, bodhi, soha, right? Six months. And then you say, I will, I will leave everything. I will leave everything. So many of us think like this. I will leave everything. I want to run away to Himalaya and meditate and become enlightened in six months. Right? Okay. For, for these people, for these people who want everything so fast, quick fix. For these people, there's a message. Again, there was one gentleman coming, going to Lhasa, the same place. And uh, again, there's a frequent... The, uh, so he was already in the middle of the, middle of the, the way uh, to Lhasa. And there was a frequent, uh, the frequent traveler. And he asked, right? Now, the, um, how long will it take there? It's not the same story, different story. How long will it take the air? And the frequent traveler asked him, where did you start from? And he said, I started from the destination A. Oh, you came so fast. You came so fast. From this destination to here, it took only two days for you. It's so, you came so fast. So that person was very happy. 
which means I'll reach Lhasa more quickly. And if you move it at this pace, you will not reach Lhasa at all. <laughs> okay, Jesse was very happy. Right. If you if you move if you if you go at this pace, you will not reach Lhasa at all. Forget about how many days. You will not reach Lhasa. And the man was confused. He thought that he was, it takes like one week, and for you it will take only five days, or it will take only four days. It's just, just opposite. You will not reach the Lhasa, reach, reach Lhasa at all. And he was so confused. Why? Why not reach Lhasa? If you go at that pace, you will die before you reach Lhasa. Right? So therefore, if you're too ambitious, you will terminate your journey to Buddhahood. So therefore, we should have a sense of resilience and so, so sense of patience and keep in mind that even to complete your PhD, it takes how many years? Seven. Huh? Seven. Just seven years. Which is seven, seven, seven years old boy? No. Then? Schooling, graduation, cross grad, then the PhD, total how many years? Total from schooling? 32, no. 32, almost like 32 years. You're getting it? Even for PhD, you have to spend like 32 years, and Buddha Hood is even further than that. How can I expect in about six months? You're getting it? Then you'll die. <laughs> you'll not complete the journey. Okay. So with this, the, the next point that, okay, any more thoughts? What comes to your mind when you, when you think about learning MTNS? Okay, there. Raviji? Okay, we should know about the positive and negative phenomena, without which you will not get a good picture of what, about what MTNS is. Good. So how the mind interacts with the object and while the object is totally lacking objective reality but what makes the mind to, to interact with the object is totally like the object exists as truly real and so how it, that the, uh, <coughs> the, what is your question, how or why well, that things why exist? Why why is it like this? Yeah. That's interesting. Why things are like this? Okay, good. Anyone else? Yes. Geshe are non affirming negative, and you know, I try and reflect that if it's negative, but at the same time, it doesn't affirm anything else, and even the emptiness lacks any sort of objective existence. So, just trying to understand. Yeah. Okay, so the about the positive and negative phenomena, and particular negative phenomena within that affirming, non affirming, negative. We need to know all these things. Without knowing these things, you will not get a very precise understanding of emptiness. Okay, Pudila. By the way, there are two Pudilas, right? Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. How not to fall into the two extremes? Instead, how thing how we understand emptiness in the light of dependent origination. Very good. Anyone else? Yes here. How to get rid of your self-grasping ignorance and wake up from the samsara and achieve nirvana. I say it again. How to get rid of your self-grasping ignorance and wake up from the samsara and achieve nirvana. How to get rid of your self-grasping ignorance and get away from samsara and attain enlightenment or nirvana. Right? Very good. Shall just yes. Okay. So in the uh, rejecting the seven possibilities of objective existence, we need to know how to reject the seven possibilities of objective. Very good. Okay. Okay. So we do know precisely what is emptiness, and then avoid nihilism. Very good. Yes, Omla. So how to know that uh, if you are going on the wrong path, 
Oh, that's good. Yes. Okay, so wrong path is what? No, no, no. So wrong path is? So you have to go a little technical. What you said is I agree fully with you, but we should be a little technical also. What are the, the possible wrong paths? Nihilism and absolutism. You're getting it? In other words, how to avoid the two extremes. Going, to, going into any of the two extremes is going to wrong path. Right? So how to avoid the two extremes? This is a technical way of asking how to avoid going into wrong paths. Perfect. Very good question. Anyone else? Yes, Ajika Sandwala. Okay, that's a serious question. Okay, Dongala, how do you respond to this question? What's the question? How would you tell if the engine is in the morning? Very good. So, you have any solution to this? Go to a learning teacher and. Yes, wise answer. <laughs> wow, wise answer. I cannot say no. Okay, go to a learning teacher, right? Right? Okay, wonderful. Anyone else? Any more questions? Oh, yes. Tendola, you have? What comes to your mind when you talk about emptiness? Anyone? Yes, Tendola, you have to say? Okay, anyone else? Okay, good. Anyone else? Yes, Audrey? Audrey. Okay. Don't Allah. <laughs> what Audrey is saying is like a response to your mother's question. Right? How to distinguish the five levels of emptiness? This will make you get to the, the, the real understanding of emptiness. If you know all these five levels so well, then you will see your understanding of emptiness. Does it fit with the first understanding, second level understanding, third level understanding, fourth level understanding, fifth level understanding? In other words, to understand these five levels will make you to become very confident that your understanding is whether or not it is the original, the real concern of emptiness or not. So this is a very good, the say the way to check. Anyone else? That's it. Okay, good. Now uh, for this, the uh, let's say that the okay we talked about okay I'm going to give some examples before we jump into the four essentials. Okay, say the chocolate in my right hand and the, uh, the imaginary chocolate in my left hand. Which of the two you think is mentally, which of the two is coming, coming from the object or from the subject? Tell me. Yes, Ajay Gibala. Uh, the from, the from the object? Uh, so technically we learned this word that the chocolate in your left hand is objectively real or objectively existent and imaginary chocolate in my uh, like my right hand is subjectively existent you're getting it subjectively existent okay so this is how we take may, as many examples one number two uh, let's say that the say say let's say in india right Let's say in India, say somebody earns, let's say, 10,000 rupees. Is it a good salary or not a good salary? Not a good salary. Not a good salary. Okay, those people who get only 3,000 rupees, it's amazing. I wish I'm that person, right? So, what? So, from this we see that whether it's good or bad is all relative. Is all subjective. You're getting it? Good or bad? It's sub subjective. Okay. So, uh, if you, if possible, try to keep note of the examples, which are easy examples, to know that things are subjectively real, like relativity, good and bad. 
high and low, right? High and low, good and bad, and like, uh, for example, uh, uh, say the um, uh, um, what? Young and old, right? Hot and cold. Mm -hmm. huh? What is beautiful, what is not beautiful, they're all relative and it is how you, how you perceive, right? Perceive, that is, the, you have to bring these examples as, the, as much as possible. Okay, let's say, uh, the traffic rules are subjective or objective? Traffic rules, that you have to, you have to drive on the left lane or the right lane, by the way. Huh? No, my question is which of the two lanes you have to drive, right lane or left lane? It depends on? Depends on the laws of the country. And who made the laws of the country? The people, right? People's thinking made it. People's body did, didn't make it. People's thinking they made it. Their thinking is known as convention. You're getting it? It's the convention that created these laws. Okay, so from the traffic rules are also conventional, right? And what is this? Hey, what is this? Peace, right? With two fingers is peace. With four fingers, more peace. <laughs> right? With four finger, fingers is more peace. What is this? What is this? Good, right? And then this is very good. You no, know, it's purely convention. You're getting it? They're showing this finger, as, their thumb as good, is purely convention, right? So try to bring in as many examples. This will, you know, make it, for example, like if you, if there is an, if, how do, what do you do? You say, I uh, say you want to wash a cloth, and if there's no washing machine, and the cloth is very, the very greasy. Right? What do you do? You keep it soaked in the detergent. Right? So longer, but you don't just take it out and rinse it directly. You keep it soaked. What happens? That the grease simply is taken away by the... Because it, there's a time factor there. Time factor. Likewise, the more we think about say the like uh, the, the dream is coming from your mind travel rules are also convention coming from our mind and then the red lights green lights green lights means go red lights stop this is all pure convention why the why not the blue light to say stop right why why not the green light means go it's very really dangerous go 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 right the, no what red light with the red it's very dangerous to stay here, go away. It's opposite. Red light means to stop. Right? Why? It's purely convention. Just how your mind say the creates a convention. Nothing from the object. Right? And the, the, the say, democracy is purely convention. Right? President, non president. Say today you you become the president. For example, say the say somebody is appointed as the president or the prime minister, he becomes he or she becomes very important, and the next day, there's somebody else comes up, where the the other person becomes the ordinary person, right? So all the purely convention, purely convention, not that when the person becomes is appointed they were appointed, or what voted elected as the president, then the person becomes more knowledgeable. No, knowledge was the same person, right? But the conventions make him very powerful, make her very powerful. Okay, it's a pure convention. You think more of these. Okay, so from this, by reflecting on many of these things, um, oftentimes, what is so, what in short, what we're going to learn is that everything is projection by own mind. Convention means something which comes from your mind, some, something which your mind creates, you, which your mind creates rule, regulations, and so forth. This is not convention. Your mind creates projection of your mind. So we need to know 
how everything is projection ones of one's own mind okay with this we'll jump into the four essentials ready four essentials the reasoning of the four essentials to establish emptiness the reasoning of the four essentials to establish emptiness The reasoning of the four essentials to establish emptiness. The number one, identifying the, the essential of identifying the object of negation. The essential of identifying the object of negation. Number one. Okay. Number two, essential of understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically one with its parts essential for understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically one with its parts essential for understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically one with its parts number three the essential of understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically different from its parts. Everything the same, just one bit different, just change these two, otherwise the same. And the understanding the emptiness the essential of understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically different from its parts. <coughs> Then number four, the essential of understanding, essential of understanding the pervasion, pervasion, <coughs> essential of understanding the pervasion, essential of understanding the pervasion that anything which is empty of being intrinsically one, one with, and intrinsically different from its parts entails the emptiness of objective existence of the object okay let me repeat it essential understanding the pervasion essential understanding the pervasion that anything which is empty of being intrinsically one with and intrinsically different from its parts entails the emptiness of the emptiness of objectivity of okay emptiness of the objective existence of the object let me repeat it a sense of understanding the pervasion that anything which is empty of being intrinsically one with and intrinsically different from its parts entails the emptiness of objective existence of the object okay everyone got it last one okay all four okay the first one is essential one essential of understanding the object of negation essential of understanding object of negation number one number two Essential of understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically one with its parts. Number three, essential of understanding the emptiness of the objects being intrinsically different from its parts. Number four, essential of understanding the pervasion that anything which is empty of being one with and different from its parts entails the emptiness of objective existence of the object. Tozi, you got it? Okay. The conclusion. Conclusion. Therefore, conclusion. Therefore, emptiness of objectivity of the object is the objectivity of the object. Therefore, emptiness of objectivity of the object is the objectivity of the object. Therefore, 
emptiness of objectivity of the object is the objectivity is the objectivity of the object therefore emptiness of objectivity of the object is the objectivity of the object okay so this conclusion is like a zen's puzzle <laughs> right it's like a zen's puzzle if you really understand that if you really understand that you are very 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 meritorious very fortunate it's not a zen puzzle this is a extremely profound concept okay in fact i just would like to share the this with you that i was invited for a conference on consciousness organized by a group of neuroscientists in israel is there anybody from israel no one no one okay say there was a conference in israel then and i attended this conference was on consciousness organized by neuroscientists particularly the chief of the organizer was a extremely renowned neuroscientist very senior neuroscientist and in my talk you know the somehow the two thirds all these things came up and then on this part emptiness of objectivity of the object is the object of the object i said this and after the the conference meaning that day of the com day that the conference for that day came to an, came to an, came to the close the chief organizer the, the senior most neuroscientist he was asking somebody what is what was this line emptiness of objective do what and then that person brought him to me and then i repeated this and he was like a small child he was so fascinated look this is a brilliance brilliant people will be attracted by these the these very profound lines so like a small child he he was a, he is the boss of this whole conference like a small child he was memorizing this on the spot emptiness of objectivity of the object is the objectivity of the object he was memorizing it and this objectivity of the object is objective of the object and this objectivity of the object is objective of the object he was memorizing like a small child he was so fascinated by this which means he is very bright of course he is very, very very renowned neuroscientist okay for this was the first one a sense of understanding object of negation okay this is a uh, this is a point which the um chanjula and here your name the gentleman priya huh? or priya prirag okay chanjula prirag and this and you also and then i think four or five people said that uh, yes and the tuzi also you also said the opposite of emptiness which means object of negation opposite of emptiness is the object of negation so the first point is identifying the object of negation okay okay let's say that okay in my pocket okay you tell me whether the statement that i make is correct or not correct in my pocket um there's no there's no gold watch there's no gold watch of in my pocket there's no gold watch owned by owned by um what owned by gold watch owned by elon musk is it true or not true huh my pocket doesn't have the gold watch owned by elon musk true or not true true, true. my pocket it does it is empty empty emptiness you know empty of what observe emptiness my pocket is empty of the watch owned by elon musk my pocket is empty of kinshu subalen kinshu kinshu the kinshu subalen de baba true or not true let me say this again be very serious don't feel bored 
Right? Don't feel bored. Give an answer. Right? You did so well with the first question. <laughs> the second one, second one, okay. My pocket is empty of Gyushu Sibale and Dimbawa. Correct or not correct? Correct or not correct? Purilla, Tirumbudla. You're not, you're you're not, you're not, you're, well, it's not correct. Statement is wrong. Or statement is correct. Okay. So to say it is empty of, you, you need to know. You need to know what it is empty of. Empty of what? That object, without knowing this, you cannot be sure whether it exists not exist, but it's empty, not empty, you cannot be sure, right? So, Gyunshu Siba Len Dimbaba is, is uh, the, um, somebody who realizes emptiness, a person, a being who realizes emptiness, but following the, uh, the uh, Shravaka, Shravaka path, personal liberation, seeking personal liberation. So, is that person in my pocket? So, it's empty of that person, right? is empty of that person. To know it is empty of that person, you should know what that person is. To know that things are empty of objective existence, you have to know what is meant by object, objective existence. You're getting it? So object, objective existence to be negated. When you say emptiness, you have to know what is the opposite of emptiness. And the opposite of emptiness is technically referred to as object of negation of emptiness. You're getting it? Okay. So when I say that the um, okay okay Paruji right tell me if this statement is correct or not correct okay I have no luncheon in my pocket huh Lang Chen. Okay. So the, all the Tibetans are laughing. I've no Lang Chen in my pocket. Correct or not correct? And the Tibetans? My pocket is empty of Lang Chen. Correct? Not correct? Correct. Why correct? Lang Chen means? Elephant. Elephant. You're getting it? So if you don't know what Lang Chen is, you cannot make the judgment whether it's correct or not correct. So to, without knowing what is objective existence, you cannot say emptiness of objective existence. To say that things are empty of objective existence, you need to know what is objective existence. You're getting it? So objective negation of emptiness is the opposite of the emptiness. Opposite of the emptiness is known as the objective negation of emptiness. So for example, say that my hand does not have a chocolate. What is negated? Chocolate in my hand is negative. Chocolate is not negative. You're getting it? <laughs> because chocolate is in the shop. In the shop there are lots of chocolate. chocolate. We cannot negate chocolate. Chocolate in my hand is negated. You're getting it? Okay. Same. The, the car does not have fuel. The, the car does not have fuel. What's, what is negated? Uh, the fuel in that car is negated. Likewise, they, um, this chocolate is not flower. What's negated? Flowers negated? No, flowers no, flowers there. The chocolate being a flower is negated. The chocolate being a flower is negated. This chocolate is not objectively real. What's negated? This flower being object real is negated. You're getting it? So if I say emptiness of the emptiness of this chocolate. Emptiness of the chocolate, what is negated? I didn't say emptiness of the objective existence of the chocolate. I said emptiness of the chocolate. What's negated? Chocolate is negated. No, be very courageous to say that. Yes. So I'm very certain, telling you that I do not say the emptiness. What is negated when I when I say 
emptiness of objective existence of the chocolate. This is not what I said. What I said, I, I didn't qualify that with the objective existence. I just said emptiness of the chocolate was negated. Objective existence of the chocolate is negated. I didn't say emptiness or objective existence of the chocolate. I just said emptiness of the chocolate. But emptiness is a short form of emptiness of objective existence. You're getting it? You should be very assertive. Right? Be strong. Right? Okay. So, what's the object of negation of the emptiness of the chocolate? Ajay Kesala. Very good. Objective existence of the chocolate is the object of negation of the emptiness of the chocolate. You're getting it? Okay. What's the object negation? What is the object of negation of the emptiness of emptiness of your emptiness of your mind? Anyone presents? Anyone? What's the object of negation of the emptiness of your mind? Resents? 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 Okay, Jugandraji. Objective existence of the mind is what? I don't know so what is negated. What I said, what is the object of negation of the emptiness of your mind? Dinsi Pindola? Huh? Yes, Navia? The mind. Don't negate the mind. Mind is very important. Huh? Mind exists. True. So, anybody else? Okay. Here? Emptiness of the emptiness of the mind is negated. Emptiness of the emptiness of the mind is negated. That's interesting. Okay. So, what is the object negation of the emptiness of your mind? Emptiness. Gabor? Independent existence of the mind, independent existence of the mind is the object of negation of the emptiness of the mind. Good. Okay, say it. Of the, the objective existence of the mind is the object of negation. Wow. Very good. Okay, what is the object of negation of the emptiness of the mind? Objective existence or independent existence or inherent existence or intrinsic existence or true existence or absolute existence or ultimate existence of the mind is the object of negation of the emptiness of the mind. There are so many synonyms. You're getting it? The Dongala, you got it? So when you say emptiness of the mind, what you negate is Objective ex existence of the mind is negated, right? The mind is empty of being objectively real. Oh, you're good. So now, I say, okay. Now tell me, what is the object of negation of emptiness? Reasons, reasons. Who know? Who know? Who has the answer? Reasons. What is the object of negation of emptiness? Reasons. Just reasons. Reason. All those who have the answer, reasons. Or who think you have the answer is hands? Oh, no one. Only a few hands. One, two, three, four. Parang, no? What's the object negation of emptiness? Anyone else? Okay, Niraji. Are you sure? Objective existence and the uh, objective existence of the of the emptiness. Um, I didn't ask. What's the object negation of the emptiness of the emptiness? Is there a difference? What's the object negation of emptiness? What's the object negation of emptiness or emptiness? You got this difference. Do you see a difference? Okay, how many you could see a difference? Raise hands. Let me ask question again. What is the object negation of emptiness? Second question. What is the object negation of emptiness of emptiness? 
these two are different. Okay, Parulji. Very good. Okay, how many agree with Paruji resigns? Very good. Okay, thank you. So when you say empty, what is the object negation of emptiness? Just say objective existence. Objective existence is the negate the object negation of emptiness. When you say emptiness or emptiness, objective existence of the emptiness or emptiness, objective ex uh, sorry, object negation of emptiness or emptiness is like object negation of emptiness of the flower, right? When you say the emptiness of flower, emptiness of emptiness, emptiness of flower was the object negation? Objective existence of flower is the object negation of the emptiness of the flower. What's the object negation of the emptiness of emptiness? Objective existence of the emptiness is the object negation of the emptiness of the emptiness. You're getting it? If you're a little confused about the emptiness, emptiness, don't worry. Keep that aside for the time being. This is what Niruji brought from Pune. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's keep that aside for the time being. Okay. So uh, the, the next is that. So what? What? Now tell me. Um, they say what is the object negation of emptiness? Anyone? Objective existence is the object negation of emptiness. You're getting it? How many got it? Raise hands. Good. The next question. Next question, very serious question. You have to speak your mind, right? Don't worry, you get wrong, don't worry. What do you understand by objective existence? What does it mean by objective existence? What does it mean by objective? So okay, first question you cleared. First question was what is, the object, what is the object negation of emptiness? You all said objective existence, the object negation of emptiness. Objective existence. Okay, you got it correct. Now the next question is what? What does it mean by objective existence? You are not understanding what objective existence means. That doesn't mean anything. So what does it mean by objective existence? Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands. Yes, Gabor. Or something exists independent of your mind or the subject. Chelsea? I was saying that it exists truly. That something which exists truly. And the, um, the, uh, the Nicola? Um, phenomena existing independently from the mind apprehending them. Okay, a phenomena existing independent of the, the, the mind which apprehends them. Yes? Okay, a phenomenon, the, uh, what? That exists, um, Independently the of the causes, the paths, and the metal designation. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, Pemisila. A phenomenon which exists from outside, not from the mind, from outside. Anyone else? Omula? Or something which exists on its own, on its own. You, yes. Anyone else? Yes, Raviji. Something which exists intrinsically. Anyone else? Okay. Yes. Independent. Something which exists independently. Independent of causes. Okay, independent of mental imputation. Okay, so we have many answers. Any, any more? Denzi Andrula? No? Okay. Um, so there are many points. Okay, let me uh, tell you. Say, I'll give you another idea. Okay. If you ask me, what is the object of what is the object of negation of emptiness of this chocolate? If I say that tiger, tiger is the object of negation of this chocolate, is it correct or not correct? 
Is it correct or not correct? Okay. Not correct. How not correct? How not correct? That this plum, what is the what is the what is the uh, the object negation of emptiness of the chocolate? I say tiger. That the chocolate is empty of being a tiger. So tiger is the object negation. Is it correct or not correct? Ah, it's not correct. How is it not correct? Put it up. Say it again. So I said, objective existence is not negated. Tiger is negated. So how would you defend your position? Emptiness of the chocolate. So what is negated? I said, tiger is negated. That the child, that the or chocolate being empty of tiger is the emptiness of the chocolate. Correct? Not correct. Okay, chocolate is it empty of being? Uh, is it empty of being? Uh, is it empty of being tiger? Yes. 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 So, the chocolate being empty of uh, chocolate, empty of being a tiger, that is empty of chocolate. Is it correct or not? No. Not correct. How is? How not? Okay, you have to defend this. If you defend this, right? If anybody who can defend it very precisely. Your retreat fees will be waived. <laughs> I mean it. Anybody who can give a good answer, your retreat, your retreat fee is waived. And so I'll request the bed house to pay for you. Raise hands. And if you cannot, you have to pay double. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you give the wrong answer, you have to pay double. Yeah, raise hands. <laughs> raise hands. Raise hands, raise hands. Okay, Sanjuk, that tell me. Hey, be careful. <laughs> I'll take the best case, sure. uh, You said that to negate the objective existence, we have to know what the objective existence is. So chocolate is not a tiger. <laughs> no, so what are you saying is that take me as another person now. Right? Not the one who. The, who gave all these teachings the last few days. Suddenly, he came up with saying that you're talking about the, empty, the object negation and emptiness, object negation and emptiness of the chocolate. And I've the answer. The answer is that the tiger is object negation of the emptiness of the chocolate. Right? That the chocolate being empty of a tiger, that is the emptiness of the chocolate. So you say, no, that's not correct. How is it not correct? Okay, Nicola. This is your understanding. This is you, you know, who the previous Gishala who came taught you. <laughs> right? Anybody who can defend this. Okay, okay. So Nicola, you have to pay double. Send you that double. The answer is correct. So tiger and the chocolate are two separate entities. Objective existence also not the is not a part of the chocolate. Objective existence also not a part of chocolate because it is non-existent and chocolate exists. It's a characteristic of, huh? it's a characteristic of the chocolate. No. Objective existence. It is not the characteristic. Ca any characteristic of the chocolate should be existent. And the objective existence of the chocolate doesn't exist. It cannot be the characteristic of the chocolate because it doesn't exist. So double the fees. <laughs> okay, oh, <Mula. laughs> then if, even if the tiger is next to the chocolate, still the chocolate is not tiger. Yes, that the chocolate being empty of the, the, the chocolate, empty of being a chocolate. End up being a tiger, that is the emptiness of the chocolate. Okay, so do you have a, your pocket is okay? Can we use the answer? Check your pocket. <laughs> okay, yes. It being empty of tiger here doesn't mean all tigers everywhere are negative. 
That's true. So I did not negate the tiger. I said that the the uh, the, the chocolate being tiger, that's obvious negation of the emptiness of the chocolate. So the double. Yes. <laughs> No, no, no. That the chocolate is empty of being a tiger, that is the emptiness of the chocolate. Is it true or not? This chocolate is empty of being a tiger? Is it true or not? That the ch that chocolate is not tiger, is it true or not? That's true. So that truth is the emptiness of this chocolate. Who said it? It's not necessary. No, why should you negate objective existence of the chocolate? Who so? There's somebody who came yesterday must have told you. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you ask me, right, what is the object negation of the emptiness of the chocolate, then I say the chocolate being a tiger. That is the object negation of the emptiness of the chocolate. Right? Okay, the Gaviriji. Ishra, the referent of the label emptiness is emptiness of objective existence. So when you're using the word emptiness, <coughs> the label emptiness, you're referring to emptiness of objective existence. That's fine, both are both. Right? Emptiness of the emptiness is a short form of emptiness of objective existence. Emptiness of objective existence. So there what is negated is that the, the chocolate being chocolate being empty of objectively existent tiger. This negated. So objectively is negated, being a tiger is also negated. Okay, double the fees. Okay, now ten dollar. So ten dollar ten dollar keep in mind that otherwise this young boy has to pay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's smart. He's making me confused so that I cannot say it. I cannot charge him. <laughs> I'm confused actually. Okay, to see. So what's the, the, what's, the, uh, the, what's the problem? Is this a tiger or not? This is not a tiger. The child is not a tiger. It's not a tiger, but it shares a quality with the tiger. No. Who said it? <laughs> I do not say this. I said the chocolate is not a tiger. This is the truth. This is true. It's not a tiger. So this not being a tiger is the emptiness of the chocolate. Uh -huh. The negation has to refer to the object itself. This object. Yes. Chocolate is empty of chocolate. Okay, there. <laughs> okay, the, uh, so, even though Geshela can say rightly that the object is empty of being a tiger, it's empty of being a carrot, it's empty of being a house, it's empty of many, many things, only by understanding the Emptiness of objective existence can give out us uh, uproot the problem that causes uh, this circle in samsara. So you can realize many things, but only by understanding the emptiness of objective existence can it function to produce the effect of liberation. I greatly agree with you. <laughs> I greatly agree with you. I will not charge you. But I greatly agree with you. Still, I'm looking for a very precise answer. Anyone? You already tried? Otherwise you have to pay four times. <laughs> right? Here, Gorilla. Keshina, uh, for emptiness of chocolate, first we'll have to identify the objective existence of the chocolate. And that can only be, you know, the chocolate that functions as a chocolate, 
that comes into being through again the you know high causes, parts, mental designation. So how can we impute you know um, a tiger absence of a tiger or emptiness of a tiger? How can we bring that on a chocolate? Because that the chocolate is not a tiger, that's the true. It's not true. <laughs> yes. yes, it's true. So what is truth? That is what I call as the emptiness of the chocolate. Okay. Now, they, before we leave here for the uh, short tea break, say emptiness. How difficult it is to understand emptiness. How many of you understand emptiness? How many realize emptiness? Raise hands. You have not realized emptiness. How many you realize that the chocolate is not a uh, the tiger? Raise hands. How many realize that? So this is so easy to see. The chocolate is not a cho the uh, chocolate is not tiger. You don't have to sit for a retreat, right? Why we are sitting for the retreat is to know the emptiness of the chocolate, the emptiness of things, which must be more complicated. If it is not that complicated, if it is so easy, no need of studies, no need of retreat. You're getting it. So the point is that object negations should be. Object negation the emptiness should be such that when you negate it, you should realize emptiness. Negating this object to be negating this object to be tiger, everybody does it. Everybody can negate the anybody can negate the chocolate to be the tiger, yes? But they don't realize emptiness. Because realize emptiness is not that easy. So, in other words, according to Madhyamika philosophers, it is only the Madhyamikas who understand the emptiness. No other schools. You're getting it? But in all the schools, they know that chocolate is not a tiger. You're getting chocolate is empty of tiger. So, in other words, this is very important. What's the object of negation emptiness is, when you negate that, you should understand emptiness. After negating it, the moment it it is negated if you get don't get emptiness. If you don't get emptiness, that what you negate what you negated is not the object of negation and emptiness. You're getting it? Let me repeat it. So object of negation and emptiness should be such that when you negate it, the moment you negate it, emptiness must come to your mind. By negating it, if the emptiness doesn't come to your mind, what you negated is not the object of negation of emptiness. Let me repeat it. If you identify something's object negation, object negation should be such, or oh, let me repeat it again, let me say it from the start. Object negation should be such that you negate it, the moment you negate it, emptiness must come to your mind. You must realize emptiness. That very moment, you must realize emptiness. By negating it, if you don't realize emptiness, what you negated is not the object of negation of emptiness. You're getting it? Okay. How many of you got something out of this? Reasons. Good. Now, I will give you one example and then I will check if you got it. Okay, let's see. If you ask me that, what's the object of negation of the emptiness of, emptiness of the chocolate? I say that the, that the chocolate being, okay, Chocolate being empty of, empty of, depend, oh no, uh, chocolate, chocolate being, a uh, chocolate not dependent on the causes and conditions. Opposite of the first level of dependent origination. What is the first level of dependent origination? Dependent origination that depends on the causes. Results depend on the causes. So now, say, the was the the emptiness of the was the negation of the emptiness of the chocolate that the chocolate being independent of causes and conditions is that the object negation of the emptiness of the chocolate why not when you know when you negate when you negate when you negate okay look this is a, this little tricky part when you negate the independence of the causes and conditions of this chocolate when you negate the independence, independence of the independence from the causal conditions, 
of this chocolate, which means that this chocolate is not independent of causes conditions. When you know that, you still cannot understand emptiness. You're getting it? Okay. Even the shopkeeper knows that this is not independent from causes conditions. This chocolate <coughs> is dependent on causes conditions. But he, he is there to realize emptiness of the chocolate. You're getting it? You're getting this very important point. Let me repeat it. Say, if you ask me what is the object negation of the emptiness of the chocolate, I say that the chocolate is independent of causes and conditions. That the chocolate is independent of causes conditions. Is that the object negation of emptiness of chocolate? Answer is no. How not? Even if you negate it, still you don't get the emptiness. What is negated? That the chocolate is negated to be independent of cause conditions, which means how do you negate the chocolate to be independent of cause conditions? By knowing that chocolate is dependent on cause conditions. Okay, so even the cho chocolate maker, cho the chocolate maker, the chocolate factory, people in the, ch the chocolate factory, they know that chocolate is made by them. Chocolate is dependent on cause conditions. They know that they reject the chocolate to be independent of cause conditions, but they don't realize emptiness. You're getting it? So, now what is the object negation of the emptiness of chocolate? Objective existence of the chocolate. You're getting it? Only if you negate it, the moment you negate the object of existence of the chocolate, instantly the emptiness of the chocolate comes to your mind. You're getting it? Okay, we'll stop here. Deyata om gade gade Bara gade Bara sam gade bodhi swaha Deyata om gade gade Paragate Parasangate Bodhisvaha Tiyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasangate Bodhisvaha 